Hi, John Kelly back again for the third part of our do-it-yourself tutorial for uh, content management systems uh, in helping you with your SEO search engine optimization and we we're using the best Peterborough Salon website uh, for our demonstration purposes here again this is a live website we're using and we're in the admin panel of this website if you remember we last left off on the our staff page and as we scroll down to the bottom of the page uh, we went to a plugin here called the All-in-One SEO plugin, uh, SEO Pack plugin, and basically this tool allows us to be able to control metadata that's within our code. So basically, we can type in what we want in our code, and as and this tool will save it to the code for us automatically. So it's a beautiful thing, nice and easy. So keep in mind the title tag should reflect the title of the page itself so in this case we're talking about our staff well the author decided that the the number one title of this page which by the way if I click on this I want you to notice something notice up here it gives me a heading it says heading one alright that's the most important heading you can have on any page heading one should always be the first major heading of any web page and you only use it once then you have subheadings heading 2 heading 3 heading 4 etc why is that important because search engines actually look at the headers and headings as metadata also and that gives them a priority of the content so just like a book would be uh, you have your main title you have your chapters sub chapters etc so the headings work pretty much the same way so the heading one should always be the main title of this page in general of what it's about and if you noticed experienced salon staff is in here it's also in what we chose for the title tag of this page so they work together so that's an important little tip for you now the next thing that we talked about is the description now what's the description well if we go back to search results again the description of this page is going to be the two lines of text directly underneath the link. Now, <clears throat> if we did the search for the site, if you remember we did uh, site colon and um, we did the, let me get the page title here one second again. If we took the page URL and we stuffed it in there, this way I don't have to type it all out. I'm lazy. I like to use my mouse for everything. But I go in here and I paste in the page title. So I type site, um, colon, and then the web address and do a search of just that website. It's going to show me all the pages that Google has indexed or any search engine does this for, as a matter of fact. But if we were to go look for this page, um, which in this case was our staff, we can take a look. Here it is, slideshow, our staff. Well, that's not the same title that we just made for this page. Why? Well, that's because Google has already come to this page, recorded it, and hasn't come back since we've made our changes. If I clicked on that little cached link that was on, at the bottom there, uh, this will open up a snapshot of history of the last time Google came. It says, here is your page, and here's when I came, November 17, 2009. Uh, the date of this video is uh, December 16th, I believe and uh, shows you the page below as, as, as it saw it. So chances are what's going to happen is the next time it comes back that is going to change because it's going to see a new title because what we're doing here is we're controlling what the page's title will be and we're also controlling what this description underneath of it's going to be by doing this going back into our editor change in the title, change in the description to describe what the page is about as briefly and as concisely as possible yet still understandable by people that use the search engines to figure out what that links about and then of course we're going to use keywords now keywords again please understand these are words that are on the page words that are in the content of the page including titles okay now they do not have to be single words and they are certainly not every word of the page. They are simply key words that describe elements of the page. And they could be single words, they could be phrases like I did here. In fact, it's better to use phrases because people search with phrases and normally not single words. And after each phrase, you place the comma. And then you can continue your keywords on so. Now there's a debate how many keywords you can use. Um, 
here's the simplest way to look at, look at it. If the words are on the page and they are very important to the page, then they belong in your keywords. Now, keywords are not the answer to search results. In fact, Google pretty much ignores Google the uh, keyword metadata. Uh, but other search engines like Yahoo and Bing, etc., they still take take it into consideration. Uh, it's even rumored that Google still does it, but they don't make that public. I, I don't know that for sure. Okay, that's only what's rumored. But uh, keep in mind that um, you know it's important, nevertheless to describe to the search engine the title, give it a description, and give it some key words that are on that page that are actually in your content. And make sure you save your, your changes by clicking update the page. Now, one other little thing, a little housekeeping note. Um, you probably noticed that you have all these different things down underneath your content editor, uh, such as custom fields. Well, I'll tell you right now, you're never going to use it unless you fully understand its purpose. So every single one of these things down here that you don't want to see anymore, just simply do this. Go to the end of that gray bar, click the little triangle, it says click the toggle, and it'll close it. Okay, and now it's just a bar with a title, and that's it. If you notice, I did that for the other three underneath of it. Now, another thing you can do too, since we'll be using this thing a lot, this all in one SEO pack, click on it, click on the bar itself where the little cross, uh, uh, the cross is, click on it, and you can drag it up the page. Notice there's a dotted line following it behind it. Well, wherever the dotted line goes, when you release the mouse button, is where the box goes. So now you can have it directly underneath your content. So just a little housekeeping note there for you. But it's the same thing. If I don't want to see that, I click that and it collapses that too. But you're probably going to want to keep that open because you use it a lot. Same thing. If you want it to stay there, update your page. Click update. It's going to save your changes, etc. Now, we made changes to this page, so let's go actually see what it looks like on the actual site itself. So I'm going to open up Firefox as my editor, uh, as my browser, excuse me, and I'm going to go to that page, Our Staff. And the only reason I'm using Firefox is because it has a uh, tool that's much nicer than Internet Explorer's browser. So as you can see, our title up the top of the page, Experience Salon Staff. It reflects the H1 title of our, our main content. Okay. Oh, by the way, I was talking about H1 and H2, H3, etc. H1 would always be the top of your content describing everything in general. Think of your content as a funnel, wide open at the top and narrowing as it goes down the page. Very much like reading a magazine article or a newspaper or something like that. Describe what it is up top in general and then get into details below. So you can do subtitles underneath, but use H2 or H3, etc. Okay. So when we want to look at the other metadata of the site, we can do so by simply uh, just viewing the source or the actual uh, the geek side of this thing, what the search engines actually look like, the actual code of the website. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to view. Um, if you're, you can do this in Internet Explorer also, you can click on Source. If you're using Firefox, just uh, click on Page Source. Um, Firefox gives you a colored representation of the code instead, which is what I like. But when I'm looking at the source, one of the things that you will see is there's our title tag. Okay, this is metadata again. And here's our change that we made here, Experience Salon Staff. And then the WordPress system filled out the remainder for you at the end of it. And if we scroll down our data here, we can see our description and we can see our keywords that we place in here as well. And if you look right here, and I'll save you the aggravation of trying to read it all, um, it shows here all in one SEO pack. And there we go. Um, Michael Torbert of Semperfy Web Design is the, the creator of the plugin, so I'll give him a plug for doing an excellent job. But if we look at the meta name description, the content of that description is what we typed in. And there it is. So this is giving the search engines the information it needs. And directly underneath that is the keywords of the page as well. So as you can see, you do have influence over the little pieces, the bits and pieces that help make up your website. So in the next tutorial, we're going to wrap this up and uh, talk about the remainder of the little things that we can do. and uh, and what what you may want to do in case this is all way too much for you. I'll give you some advice on that as well. See you in the next tutorial.